guys, this is Apple Gamer 24 7 I'm here to give you guys a vlog video today. Uh, this could be like not a vlog, but vlog type video. Um, I'm here to talk about Final Cut Pro X. There's been a lot of debate over the last uh, couple of days about the software, and I just want to give my overall opinions and just some stuff that I read, and I just want to throw that in there. So, uh, what I basically broke this uh, video down into is I'm going to talk about uh, the good things, the good and bad things and the overall bad things and then I um if you guys have been uh, reading the last couple of days on like Mac rumors so I think it's on the news actually that there's a petition out to get Final Cut Pro 7 the professional application for Apple and maybe Final Cut Pro X will become Final Cut Express but I'll talk about that um, towards the end of the video so let's start off with the good things about Final Cut um, Pro X uh, personally I think it's great um, I'm a one man editing station I do all my editing myself so I think it really works out, and plus I'm not really doing, you know, big films. I'm just doing, you know, small videos, uh, screen captures, uh, capturing uh, footage with my PVR, um, footage with my iPhone, footage with my iPad. So I'm, I'm mainly using a lot of Apple software, so I think everything sort of works out for me. But I really do think it's awesome. A lot of the features that uh, I like um, are still here from iMovie and Final Cut Pro 7. But um, the one feature I am waiting for is the XML support, so I can export into like a After Effects without having to render twice. So that's one thing I'm waiting for. But that's not really a big deal for me. But the other thing I really like is that it's 64 bit. Um, since I got this uh, iMac, the 21 and a half inch uh, i3 version, I'm um I've been knocking out a lot of videos faster than I was with the 20 inch iMac. Uh, usually with the 20 inch iMac, I was usually waiting about maybe one to two hours for some 20p video. And with this iMac, I'm usually cutting that down to maybe a half an hour, 25 minutes. So this iMac is a lot faster than the previous one. And with Final Cut Pro X taking advantage of the multi-cores and the hyper-threading and the turbo boost and all my RAM, I'm usually cutting down videos maybe about maybe 20 to 15 minutes, and that's at 720p. Even at 1080p, I'm usually getting a lot more better speed than I was if I was using iMovie or previous version of Final Cut Pro. So I'm really happy with the 64-bit um aspect of it so that is one thing and I would like to see that come across to all of Apple's applications by uh, Mac OS X uh, Lion. Uh, it has the iMovie UI and now I think this is a good and bad thing but I'm putting it as my good thing because it's pretty familiar to everybody. If anybody can use iMovie, everybody, now everybody can use Final Cut. Uh, I think the iMovie interface really helps it make it more modern. The old Final Cut Pro looked kind of old and it's been the same interface since it was on the original Mac. So, uh, the interface hasn't been upgraded, but now this upgraded interface makes it look more modern, it makes it, look, it makes it run faster, things are a lot more easier to do. A few things require a few more steps, but um, after you learn the software a little bit, um, you really do get used to it. Um, within probably about half an hour, I was pretty used to how Final Cut 7, Final Cut 7, Final Cut X works, and um, where the transitions were, um, where titles were, how things applied into the timeline. I was really familiar how stuff like that worked after a few minutes because I've been such a heavy iMovie user since I got my Mac. But um, that's one thing I like. Uh, another thing I really like is the background rendering. Before in Final Cut 7, uh, every time you've been edit or add a color correction or any edit like that, you have to press Command R and render. And depending on your computer speed, that would take a while. Um, I know on the 20 inch Mac that I had with Final Cut, Final Cut Express and Final Cut Pro on it, um, usually renders took about maybe half an hour to an hour and then a final expert maybe would take um, two hours to three hours depending on the video at uh, 720p or even longer at 1080p but um, with this iMac it, I really haven't uh, rendered with Final Cut Express I've been waiting for this new Final Cut Pro to come out so mainly I've been using iMovie but um, the background rendering does help and it doesn't uh, slam my CPUs um, like it did in the previous version. So the background editing helps me a lot. Um, also, when you apply color correction, this renders it, renders it right there. And you keep adding effects and transitions and editing your clips while this background rendering is going. So you don't have to stop working while your footage is rendering. So that's one thing I really like. Also, with the iMovie interface and the entire new look, it's pretty much easier for anybody to jump into. If you're an iMovie user looking for someone more advanced and has a little bit more features, um, the Final Cut Pro will work. But um, I think a lot that's why a lot of people stuck iMovie compared to this um, the last version of Final Cut Pro because the interface was so different. And a lot of things took a lot more steps, but mainly in this new version, like I said before, uh, things require less steps, and it's pretty much similar to what you would do in iMovie. Uh, so yeah, that are my good things. Um, my good and bad things as the magnetic timeline. Uh, some people really like it. I personally don't mind it. I think it works really well. Some people hated it. I know a lot of the 
pro filmmakers don't really like the midnight timeline, um, but I personally don't mind it. I think it actually works a lot better. Um, because pre in all versions of Final Cut Pro, if uh, people are familiar with it, um, when you move the clip, it didn't move your audio. And sometimes when you moved your clip, it cut out some of the audio from the pre from the next clip, and it got really a big mess after a while. So with this new version, when you move your video, it moves your audio with it, unless you detach your audio, and then you can do what do what you want with your audio. But um, that's just one thing. Um, the save as the save features are now gone. I don't know why Apple did this, but I have a few reasons. Um, my first reason is because I think Apple wanted this to come out with Lion. I think they were going to push out a lot of new software the day Lion comes out, which is probably in a few days because July is pretty much here. So um, I think they wanted to save, uh, push this out with Lion and um, do everything with Lion. But I think the reason they took away the save as and the save features because when Lion comes out, you'll have the versions feature. Now, uh, what that is for those people that know is that versions is a, is a feature in the new Mac OS X Lion that when you when you say something, it doesn't just save that one copy, it saves multiple versions of it. So it's basically like a time machine for your documents. So I think what Apple is trying to uh, emphasize with this one is that use the versions feature and bring back your previous documents um, that you wanted to keep if you don't like the, uh, the document that you rendered uh, here. Um, you could just rather uh, you could go back to the previous version. So I think that's what Apple was trying to do with that. All right, let's get down to the overall bad things. Now the overall bad things about Final Cut Pro X is that you can't import your Final Cut Pro Seven documents. Now, that's a big letdown. I don't know why Apple didn't release this without having that feature already in place because I think this this is just stupid and what makes me want to think a little bit why they did this uh, you can't import your Final Cut Pro 7 docket so that's gonna piss off a lot of uh, people for people that use Final Cut Pro for their business or Final Cut Pro 7 they're not gonna be able to take a, uh, a project that they did and just import the Final Cut X you need to keep a version of Final Cut Pro 7 and if you don't have I mean, if you took Final Cut Pro 7 because you bought this new Final Cut Pro X uh, you're not going to be able to open it so um, it's it's kind of hard to move everything from Final Cut Pro 7 to Final Cut Pro X because some of the features are there, some of the transitions are not the same, so it's going to be a little bit different. And um, so yeah, that's basically about that. And a lot of people are mad about that, but um, since I don't work with Final Cut Pro 7, it doesn't really affect me too much. But I can understand for the big filmmakers and the some of the uh, pro YouTubers out there that use Final Cut Pro 7. Uh, limited export settings. Uh, when you export a video in Final Cut Express, a uh, Final Cut Express, Final Cut Pro X, there's a lot of different names here. Um, Final Cut Pro X um, is really hard to customize your settings. Uh, you actually need a separate program called Compressor, and what that is, it's a there's a big exporting program that Apple was selling with the um, with the previous version and has a new version now in the Mac App Store for fifty dollars. But you need that to get some more settings, um, like if you want to customize your quick time settings and stuff like that to make your video less, um, less, like it takes up less space, I guess. I guess basically how you can, I can say it. Um, if you want to, like, take up, like, less space on your hard drive, uh, you need compressor to compress that down. But personally, um, I don't really care for the size because, um, if I export at 720p from Final Cut, Pro X, it's usually about maybe a 900 meg file. That's pretty common with iMovie 2 with my videos, so it's not really a big file size issue. But for those people that uh, do care about file size, uh, you're going to need the compressor program to get some more export settings. There's also no XML, and I believe it's OFF or OMF, whatever it's called, um, settings. Uh, those are just fancy uh, files to um, make your clips available in After Effects or a few other programs without having to render twice. Um, that's what I was saying. And there's no multi-cam support, so you can't use um, multiple cameras. Um, like, you can't use a red camera and then a camcorder, or you can't use a... I believe this is how it works. I'm not really sure about this, but you can't use, like, an iPad, and then you can't transfer... And then you can't use your um, camcorder. I think that's how it works with multi-cam. I'm not really sure, but um, correct me on that if I'm wrong. So, yeah, that's just, um, that's just uh, the bad things, the good things, and the overall good and bad things that I picked out with Final Cut Pro X. To me, I think it's really good because I'm just a one-man editing station and most of my edits are digital anyway. So I think it works out good for me. Now, the last thing I do want to talk about is this petition. Um, I found this petition on Mac Rumors. They had a link to it and I decided to check it out. But um, basically, this is a petition to Apple um, saying that the, the 
the Pro users of Final Cut Pro um, don't like the new Final Cut Pro X. And um, this is the things they want to do. So you can read this by yourself. I'll post a link to this in the description. But the things they want to do is that they want Final Cut Studio 3 immediately reinstalled and supported as referred to Apple's professional grade editing application. So basically what that first thing says is that um, they, they want Final Cut, Pro, uh, Final Cut Studio 3 to be reinstated. Uh, I don't think they want like Motion 4 and Compressor 3.5 in there. I think um, Apple will just take Final Cut Pro 7 and then have it support Motion 4 and Compressor uh, motion 5 and compressor 4. If I think that's how it's going to work. But um, I can understand why for the video editors, uh, professional editors want to do this. But I don't think Apple's going to do this. And I'll talk about that towards the end of the video also. Uh, Apple is to Final Cut Pro is to be started on their new name with functionality in the user interface of Final Cut, Pro, Final Cut Pro 7. Now I think this one's a little bit weird. Um, Apple's not going to reinstall, uh, like, they might re reconsider making Final Cut Pro 7 a separate app from Final Cut Pro X but I think Final Cut Pro X is going to be the the newest version I think it would be kind of silly to support two different versions for two separate people I mean uh, these people can wait for the updates they're human um, I think they can be patient like the rest of us and wait for Apple to update Final Cut Pro X just because the updates aren't here on day one doesn't mean you have to make a big deal out of it. That's sort of how I'm looking at this next one. Um, I don't think Apple's going to um, um, rename Final Cut Pro 7 just so people can have the features that they miss on Final Cut Pro for, for, uh, that are missing from Final Cut Pro X. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I'm saying. But if you guys can't understand me, that's okay. I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. Anyway. Um, Final Cut Pro X is to uh, be considered a part of the iMovie family and is labeled as a prosumer product. Um, I don't think it's going to be part of the iMovie family. I think, if anything, uh, Final, Cup, Final Cut Pro 7 is going to be the Final Cut Pro. And then Final Cut Pro X will be just, re will be just called Final Cut Express. But that's how I think it's going to work. And the next one, or the other option Apple can do, is that they can offer, they can sell the source code for Final Cut Pro 7, and by the first day of next year, and um, developers can um, take a stab at it. So, this petition, in my opinion, is overall pointless. Um, reason being, is that you're messing with Apple, and Apple doesn't really, I want to say listen to its users, it really it really does what it wants to do. Apple's its own company. It really, really makes its own decision. It doesn't really um, use petitions and acknowledges it. I think they what they do is that they go with their gut. And I think um, what they're going to do with this is that they're going to reply to this petition by saying, um, wait for the updates. I know Apple's a busy company. They have other products and other stuff to work on. But... Uh, I think uh, the pro the video editors and filmmakers can wait um, until all these updates are fixed. Uh, but you always have your copy of Final Cut Studio Seven. Um, there, it's not. It hasn't been gone away yet. It's not been deleted with Final Cut X. Uh, you can just use Final Cut Pro Seven until all this gets fixed. So this petition, in my opinion, is overall pointless. I don't think Apple's getting knowledge it because uh, Steve Jobs doesn't really care. In my opinion, I think. Um, I think what he's going to do is he's going to just enforce, get the updates out as fast as you can, just make these people happy, and, and um, things should go from there. So anyway guys, uh, that was my video. Hope you guys enjoy. I know this video is really long, and I know some of it came out a little muffled, but um, hopefully you guys can understand. And if you have any uh, questions or anything, uh, I'll try to answer them in the comments as best I can. Uh, and also, sorry about my voice. I missed a little stuffy. So um, anyway guys, I'll see you guys in the next video.